separate us. They can't keep us together as a family. But I don't want to be taken away from you, Josh. Josh! Give me the keys. I said give me the keys! If you want them, go and get them. Stella, didn't Mr. Sheasley talk to you? No. Uh, what do you ask? Barnett boys were taken to school today. What? The runaways, they have no parents. help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. It is he who shall preserve us from all evil. It is he who shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Heavenly Father, you have called your daughter Sarah into your kingdom. We ask that you give courage to these four loved ones that she has left behind. Help them to endure the pain of her loss and to always remember their mother's love. Josh, go ahead and get in the van. Josh, I want you to meet Mr. Sanders. He's with the Children's Services. I'm real sorry about your mother. Thanks. So, uh, were you able to work things out for us? Josh. I'm afraid that we'll have to separate you boys. I'm sorry. But I was hoping we could stay a family. I know. It's your ages. They just worked against us. Again, I am sorry. Josh, at least you and Jimmy will be together. And, uh, well, I'm almost sure that we'll be able to keep uh, John and Jason together, too. I uh, want to be the, the one to tell them, if you don't mind. Oh, I, 
understand. Mrs. Barnes, if you could just give us some time by ourselves, make things a lot easier. All right. <clears throat> um, you have everybody ready to go by this afternoon. Yes, sir. Talk to all of you. So just sit down. We all know that uh, burying mom has made this the saddest day of our lives. Now there's more. The county wants to separate us. They can't keep us together as a family. I don't want to be taken away from you, Josh. I know, Jason. That's why what I've got to say here is very important. Mom was afraid something like this might happen to us. So before she died, she made me promise that I would keep us together as a family. But how are you going to do that? We're going to get out of here before the county comes, all of us. And we're going as far away as we can. But what if they catch us, Josh? They won't. Not if we all pull together. <laughs> I know this is not going to be easy. Mom left us a little money. And I'll take care of everything else. But what about your scholarship? If you leave now, you won't be able to get it. Look, all we have now is each other. As far as I'm concerned, staying together is more important than anything. Okay? Pants, Jason. All right, now look, guys, we've got to take care of these clothes. So no forcing around, okay? Morning. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you guys pulled in last night. I wanted to welcome you to my park. You, uh, you own this place? Well, no, not exactly, but I'm the only one around. Yeah? Well, uh, what can I do for you? Well, my name's Gordon, Mark Gordon. See, not many folks come up here anymore, and I'm just glad to see I'm gonna have some company. Listen, uh, Mr. Gordon, we're going to be keeping to ourselves. I'd appreciate it if you'd do the same. Oh. Nice talking to you, too. All right, come on, guys. we got to go. So, how how tall is it? Give you a hand with that. I've had Mondays that start out like this. Thank you, Miss Dubrick. Smith, Jonathan Smith. I'm the new fifth grade teacher. Stella Brisby. I'm the old and soon to retire sixth grade teacher. Well, if you don't mind my saying, you don't look old enough to retire. Mr. Smith, I've been teaching children for over 30 years. And uh, God knows I didn't do it for the money. I did it because I enjoyed watching children learn and develop. And why are you retiring? Because I'm tired. I'm tired of fighting the distractions that children seem to have these days. I mean, there doesn't seem to be any desire for learning. 
least I haven't seen any for a long time. I don't know, maybe we're just not looking hard. Well, you do the looking, Mr. Smith. I'm too tired. Okay. Now everybody knows exactly what to say, right? Our dad travels quite a bit, so we only get to see him on the weekends. And Mom works lots of different ships, so we depend on our brother Josh to most of the driving. Good. Hey, Jason, can you remember all this stuff? Go ahead. Just ask me. <laughs> if you remember to do exactly as I've said, nothing should go wrong. All right, let's go. I don't want to see any roaming eyes during this test. If there is, it's instant failure. All right? Mr. Sheasley. Good morning, Miss Brisby. Good morning. This is Jimmy Barnett. He and his brothers are new students here at Madison, and he will be in your class. Nice to meet you, ma'am. Well, I was just about to give a spelling test, but you can be excused since you don't know the words. Ma'am, I don't mind to take the test. That is, if it's all right with you. All right. Jimmy, you can take that desk over there, and then we'll start. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. All right, class, let's begin. First word, catastrophe. Next word, calculate. Next word, chrysanthemum. The mum. Next word, cultivate. Mr. Smith. Tell me, has your day improved any since this morning? Yes, a little bit. Mm. As a matter of fact, that boy over there is the reason. He's one of the Barnett boys. I put his brother John in my class. I must say he's a pretty good student. Well, must run in the family. Because Jimmy certainly shows a, a real desire to well, it's nice to know that everybody isn't affected by today's distractions, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Slip up your pants, Jason. Oops. Hey, boys. You have your lunch already? Mom forgot to give us money, but that's okay. We're not that hungry. Oh, now, wait a minute. I forgot all about the welcome lunch program for new students. You guys are supposed to eat for free. Isn't that right, Miss Brisby? Oh, yes. That's correct. Look, Jimmy, take your brothers over to the hot lunch counter and tell the server I'll take care of the lunches. Yes, sir. Thanks. <laughs> that was nice, Jonathan. I learned a long time ago that a child can concentrate much better if he has a stomach. Amen to that, Miss Brisby. It's Stella, Jonathan. Amen to that, Stella. Okay, Josh, now, you think you got the idea? Yes, sir. I'd like to thank you for this job, Mr. DiMaggio. I won't let you down. Hey, look, any son trying to help his mom out is okay in my book. And you make sure you tell her that for me, all right? Yes, sir. I sure will. Look, since I'm not paying you that much, 
You tell your mom to send in her laundry, and we'll do it. Free of charge. Thanks, Mr. DiMaggio. You bet. Jonathan. I really hate to see you working this hard, partner. Well, I was just resting my eyes for a minute. Oh, really? It sounded like you were doing an impression of Rip Van Winkle. Oh, that's <laughs> cute. That's cute. Boss keeps me up till past midnight waiting for the Barnetts to arrive. You show up doing stand-up angel. Have you made friends with them yet? Are you kidding? They don't want anything to do with me. Can't say I'd blame them. You trust anybody dressed like this? Mark, what you look like isn't what matters. It's the kind of person you are that's going to win their trust. Well, that is going to be difficult. Josh has told me to just stay away from him. Yeah. Well, I brought you some things that might help you win their confidence. Oh, 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 oh. oh but look at this stuff! <laughs> what a setup! After tonight, I think Josh will be a lot more trusting. Just make sure you stay alert. What do you mean, stay alert? Jonathan? Jonathan! He beat when he does that. How you doing? Help! Josh! Hey, hey. Help! Why? Quiet! Josh! Help! Hey, hey! Help! Why? Help! Quiet! Hey, Help! kid, come on! Josh! All right, it's hey. Help! It's all right. Help! Josh! Quiet! Help! Hey, quiet! Josh! Quiet! It's fine. Help! Everything's all right. What did he do to you? I didn't do anything. You stay where you are. What did he do? Nothing. Remember what Mom said about strangers? You yell for help. Oh yeah. Okay. Go wash up. Sorry about the mistake. Hey, it's all right. Hey, Josh, just because I don't dress nice doesn't mean I'm some kind of pervert. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I'm looking for company. I thought you were, too. You know, there is strength in numbers, especially around here. Hey, we're doing just fine by ourselves. You'll excuse me. I'm gonna go make something to eat. Hey, wait, I got, I got some hot dogs on the ice over there. Put them on the grill. I bet the boys will love them. Hey, man. If my brothers need something, I'll be the one to get it for them, okay? Yeah. Whatever you say. Don't do anything stupid. No keys up here. Just get out and nobody gets hurt. Come on. Come on, move it. Let's go. Come on. Move it. Come on. Give me the keys. I said give me the keys. If you want them, go and get them. Go on. Hotwire it. How you doing in there? Did you hear what I said? Yeah, 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 I heard you. I heard you. You listen to me, pal. When I let you go, you had better run. And I had better never see you around here again. You got it? All right, now get out. Fine. Thanks for saving us, Mr. Gordon. It's Mark. 
Why don't you guys go back to sleep? Everything's all right now. Hey, Mark. I, uh, would like to apologize for everything I said. See, now I was wrong. I understand. Hey, look, why don't we just forget everything that was said and start over, okay? Okay. <laughs> hey, listen, um, you know, I would really appreciate it if you could keep an eye on them the next couple of nights. I'm doing some house painting after I drop them off from school. And, uh, I, I mean, I should be back by 8 o'clock or so. No problem. Like I said, it pays to stick together. Like, why don't you get some sleep now? Huh? I'll be here. All right. All right. That's all for today. Remember tonight, we have parent-teachers conferences. I'll be looking forward to meeting all your parents. See you later. My dad's out in business. And my mom's working late tonight, so they won't be over to come. Oh. I'm sorry to hear that. Our older brother would have come by, but he's painting houses after work today. This whole week. I thought he worked at the cleaner. Oh, yeah, he does. He just wanted to make some extra money. You're a hard-working group. Yes, ma'am. I gotta go. Jimmy, if your brother needs more paintwork, have him call me. I need a few things done at my place. I'll tell him. Josh, you did a wonderful job on the dining room. Oh, thank you, Miss Brisby. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> Have some cookies. That can wait. Oh. Well, thanks. You know, I really like this house. Mm, it's been around a long time. But it could use some fresh paint and a few nails. Well, if you're offering the work, I'm accepting. Why not? You've impressed me with your work so far. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate it. Well, if it isn't the nerd brothers. Can you believe these nerds? They can't get enough of school so the guys study before it even starts. What's your problem, Billy? You are nerdo. I mean, you come to the school and think you're some kind of genius or something. Whatever old Brisby asked, you got an answer for it. My brother can't help it if he's smart. Shut up, nerd face. Nobody's talking to you. Watch your mouth, Rucker. Jimmy, remember, we don't want any trouble. Yeah, Jimmy, we don't want old Brisby to think you're a troublemaker. <laughs> oh, his little pocket ripped. <laughs> Gosh, if you just let me explain. Man, what is there to explain? You blew it, Jimmy. You blew it for all of us. They want one of our parents to come in. I'm sorry. Well, sorry doesn't quite cut it with me. All I wanted was for you guys to play it cool, man, and we'd be all right.
See, now we have to leave. Josh, please. All I did. I said I didn't want to hear it, okay? I'm so sorry, man. It's okay, Josh. No, it's not okay. Jimmy, I'm sorry. I do. I... I'm just trying to keep things going, you know? It's so hard. But, uh, I just don't want anything to tear us apart, you know? Me neither, Josh. Me neither. Boy, sure smell good. Yeah. About ready to call you guys to come and join me. Oh, I, uh, I appreciate that, Mark. Hey, you got plenty. Mark, I need to ask you a favor. A, a big favor. Ask away. You see, Jimmy got in trouble at school today. And, uh, the thing is, his teacher wants to have a meeting with one of his parents. Oh, I see. Yeah, and, uh, Mark, would you go for us? You know, you know, pretend to be our dad. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Me? Your dad? Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you've gotten to know us, and, and we kind of look at you as, uh, well, a, a special friend. Oh, I don't know, Josh. What if I was to mess things up for you? Uh, but, but I know you won't. I know you won't, Mark. Just, what do you say? Please. All right. All right, I'd be glad to be your dad for a day. <laughs> all right. All right, listen, I'll get you some nice clothes from the cleaners and everything. All right, all right. Now, why don't you go tell your brothers to come and get it? <laughs> all right. Oh, thank you, Mark. You're welcome, son. Miss <laughs> Brisbane, I want to assure you, Jimmy now understands that fighting is no way to settle a problem. <laughs> Well, he's such a fine student, Mr. Barnett. I'd hate anything like that to overshadow everything he's done. Oh, I understand. I want to thank you for confining it to this classroom. And I guarantee you, there will be no more problems. Well, at least not with Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there won't be. You know, he thinks the world of you. He looks forward to seeing you here at school. Well. I think he's a very special boy. As a matter of fact, all your boys are just fine young men. <laughs> I can't tell you how I've looked forward to seeing you. Oh, well, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Mr. Barnett. I hope I have a chance to meet your wife. My wife, my uh, wife. Uh... Yes. Oh, I'm sure we can arrange that. <laughs> Well, uh, I better run. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Keep up the good work. <laughs> yeah, thank you for coming. Josh, I got an emergency. Can you stay an extra hour? I'll pay you double. Well, I got to pick up my brothers at 4.30. Hey, this is important. I got to get this work out. Yeah, yeah, all right then. Don't wait for me. Great, thanks a lot.
There's still no answer. He must have had to work late. Jimmy, they're gonna close up the schoolyard pretty soon. I know. Look, don't worry. He'll be here. Why now? Hello, boys. Oh, hello, Mr. Sheasley. Would you boys have a ride home? Yes, sir. Our brothers do any time. Well, it's pretty late. Maybe he got held up or something. What's your phone number? I'll call for you. Uh, we already did. There's nobody at home. We'll be OK, Mr. Sheasley. I'm sure Josh will be along any minute. Well, I got to lock up. Tell you what, you come with me, I'll drop you at the house. Oh, no, we can't do that. I can't let you stay out here. It's against policy. Let's go. Come on. Much further, Jimmy. Well, uh, we're getting close. It's uh that house across the street. I'll wait just in case no one's home. Thanks a lot, but you don't have to wait. Oh, well, you go ahead and make sure. Hi, uh, Jimmy left his jacket in my car. What are you selling? I beg your pardon? The jacket's a great lead-in. What are you selling? I just dropped your three boys off. I have nine girls. Aren't you Mr. Barnett? No, my name is Ramirez. I'm sorry for bothering you, Mr. Ramirez. I guess I got the wrong house. Was John Barnett in school today? Well, no, no, he wasn't. Oh, darn it. And Jimmy was out sick, too, and here I wanted to send home Josh the money I owed him. Stella, didn't Mr. Sheasley talk to you? No. Uh, what do you ask? 
the Barnett boys were taken out of school today. Why? The runaways, they have no parents. Well, that's impossible. No, it isn't. When their mother died, they were going to be put in foster care. They were going to be separated. But rather than have that happen, they ran away. They've been living in a van in the park ever since. Josh even quit school to try to help support him. Oh, I don't believe it. It's impossible I met their father. No, he was just an imposter, someone they met in the park. But they're such fine boys, I... What's gonna happen to them? Well, the younger ones will be put in foster care. <laughs> Since Josh broke the law, taking them away, he's gonna have to have a hearing. A hearing? All he did was try to keep his little family together. I know that, but I'm not so sure the court's gonna see that. <laughs> Courts, sure. The law or the system. Oh, my God. Doesn't anybody ever consider people's feelings anymore? Not as much as they should, I suppose. Anyway, the hearing's tomorrow. I'm going to take a run down there, try to lend them a little support. Is there anything you'd like me to tell the boys for you? Oh, yes. Tell them I... Great God will help them. Not only fine young students, Your Honor, but they're really fine young men. I only hope the court can see its way past the law books to do everything possible to keep this family together. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for coming, Mr. Smith. You may step down. Josh Barnett, please take the stand. Raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please be seated. Josh, do you understand that you broke the law when you ran away with your brothers? Your Honor, I wasn't thinking of any laws. I was only thinking of keeping my family together. Well, Mr. Barnett, it's time to think about the law and why you disobeyed the court order. Your Honor, my mother knew that we might be split up after she died, so I promised her that I would do everything I could to keep us all together. And that's why you ran away? Yes, sir. Well, you may have acted a bit prematurely. Children's services usually do everything they can to keep a family intact. Excuse me, Your Honor, but due to the ages of these boys, we were unable to keep them together. They will be placed in uh, separate facilities. Josh, the court knows that no malice was intended in your attempt to keep your family together. Therefore, no charges will be brought against you. However, the court also recognizes that your act was it was one of extreme recklessness, even though it was done to fulfill a dying mother's request. Excuse me, sir, but I did it to fulfill our dying mother's love. Yes, well, you may step down.
This court hereby orders the minor children of Sarah Barnett to be placed under the supervision of the county children's services. Court is adjourned. Honor. Madam, the court is adjourned. But I must have a moment of your time. Your Honor, my name is Stella Brisby. I have been a teacher in this state for over 30 years. And in all that time, I never questioned anything pertaining to the law. But, Your Honor, I have to speak out. What happened in this courtroom today? Four people's lives were chained by the simple stroke of your pen. Mrs. Frisbee, I have already told you this court is adjourned. Then unadjourn it. Bailiff, please. Your Honor, I mean, what would it hurt the court to listen to what Miss Frisbee has to say? Mr. Smith, I have already made my ruling. Nothing this woman says is going to make me change that. Then let me ask one question. What would it take to keep all these boys together? Someone who is qualified, who is willing to take them in and give them a good home. I see. I want all you boys to know uh, that I would never fill your mother's shoes. God knows I wouldn't dare to try. But I can offer you a good home. A home you can call your own if you want to. Miss Brisby, we don't know what to say. I think a simple yes would make us all very happy. <laughs> yes! Mr. Saunders, would you be kind enough to do whatever is needed so that I can take these boys home? Well, I'm, uh, I'm afraid it's not all that simple. Well, it isn't that complicated, either. There's some paperwork to do, but I'm sure we can expedite that, can't we, Mr. Sanders? Of course, Your Honor. Of course. All right, then. Well, Miss Brisby, unless you have a very unsavory background, in a little while, you will be the mother of four. Congratulations. Congratulations.